Hi all, uh, welcome to the next session of uh, embed software testing unit 2 series, this is lecture 21. So today we study more about uh, the white box testing uh, techniques and uh, continue our white box testing understanding with uh, more details and uh, we will uh, try to conclude this unit 2 in today's session if not in the next session. And uh, in yesterday's session we discussed about uh, uh, the other techniques of uh, white box testing such as uh, branch condition testing and before that we studied statement testing, branch condition testing, data flow testing. So in branch condition we know that uh, <coughs> Uh, the testing does uh, source code which finds out decisions and the individual boolean operands. And uh, the boolean operands within the decisions conditions will be tested with the help of decision condition testing or this also called as branch condition testing. The next type of testing uh, which is uh, also called uh, in terms of aerospace industry NCDC branch condition combination testing where the testing aspects will be done on the source code which recognizes the decisions and the individual boolean operands within the decision conditions. All the possible values that are going to be fed into the boolean operands within the decisions will be tested. So accordingly test cases will be designed such a way that the independency is achieved. Then we have studied about modified condition testing where uh, the outcomes especially the result whatever it is going to arrive at will be tested. Also the last one the linear code or sequence and jump uh, testing we did. Uh, here we have seen uh, three types of uh, TER uh, test effectiveness uh, ratios where TER1 is the number of statements, statement coverage basically, TER2 is uh, number of control flow branches versus uh, control flow total uh, branches, the last one is LCSAG is executed. So they used to use it initially, uh, but nowadays uh, they use the other type of testing. So we also went through some of the example and this is a LCSAG table and the total number of LCSAG numbers with the start line, finish line and the jump line will be addressed. The last one is <coughs> the D1 sonnet D specific uh, uh, testing is called MCDC. Basically, this is due on sonnet the life cycle of uh, processes addressing to each life cycle activities such as planning, development, and testing. Testing is called as integral process, and under development, it has requirements, design, coding, and integration. And uh, we have studied about a few examples of uh, the AND gates, the OR gates, how a truth table uh, can be arrived. So this type of testing is also called as a truth table uh, approach where all the possible combinations which yields the independency as well as the, uh, the outcome of the testing will be tabled and accordingly the tests will be driven. Okay, so in today's session we will study about uh, gray box testing as I said in uh, the class it is a mix of uh, both white box as well as uh, uh, black box. Uh, sometimes what will happen is uh, the black box may not be sufficient uh, to support the coverage or the justification in terms of testing. Similarly the white box sorry the black box also may not be enough so we need to balance between both of them especially the integration test cases and the system, some of the system test cases and some of the white box of coverage, uh, we need to be balanced. So with the type of gray box system that is uh, addressed, white box test can be intimately connected to the influence of the code, they can be more expensive to maintain than black box test because of the complexity and other factors. Test that only we know a little about the influence of sometimes called as gray box. Yes, here what I said is some knowledge of uh, the internal will be known. Gray box test can be 
very effective when coupled with error guessing. So another type of uh, method called error guessing where the errors are guessed based on the knowledge of the unit under test and uh, that will be implemented. The test design will be applied accordingly. So these tests are gray box because they cover specific portions of the code. They are error guessing because they are chosen based on the guess about what errors are likely. That means the test will be carried out as a pre pre test uh, sort of a thing. Then the user has a knowledge about uh, what could be the likely failures that could come, and based on his knowledge uh, about the system and about the code. So he will balance between a specific portion of the code as well as the black box features. So he will apply certain test cases. Those test mechanism is called gray box testing. So this testing strategy is useful when you are integrating new functionality with a stable base of legacy code. So that means that we have a base code which is working most of the time and which doesn't have much issues or which doesn't have unknown issues. And uh, there is a new piece of code or functionality is being added. So what we do is we will try to understand how the functionality is being implemented with the help of a piece of uh, code and with the help of a system uh, understanding of the knowledge we will try to apply new test cases. So this kind of new test cases mechanism is called as gray box testing. Okay. The next one, these are all basically uh, the additional details what I am trying to give in terms of white box testing. The main methods in white box testing in terms of coverage and all we have covered in earlier. We will uh, add to that uh, there are different uh, testing methods and the <coughs> testing philosophy and the uh, test details that needs to be studied. Okay. So we will study about a test driver and a test stub. So what is a test driver? What is a test stub? You might have heard about this. So all the embedded systems, I mean embedded system testing mechanism will apply this test driver and test stub. It's particularly useful for software testing where unit testing is done. So okay, a test driver. So software which executes software in order to test it. That means Test driver is again a piece of software, it is a test software which executes what the software that is embedded software unit which is under test to test it. So providing a framework for setting input parameters, executing the unit and reading the output parameters. I have a diagram in Unix player, may I will explain you can understand better. So what will happen is sometimes uh, some of the input parameters, execution and expected output may not, may not be possible with a realistic inputs. So what we need to have is development of a small driver which drives all these inputs and it calls the piece of software under the test and expects the result. So with the help of test driver this, is be, this will be done. A test stub imitation of an unit used in place of the real unit to facilitate testing. So this is a complement basically of the test driver on the other side where the actual piece of software which is supposed to work will be replaced with a stub so that we know that test driver is working or not properly to see that what is expected and the same thing will be replaced with the actual piece of software to compare the expected result and arrive at the conclusion is that the tests have been passed or failed. So that is how a test stub is used. Uh, you go to this diagram, this will uh, give a clear, clear picture of how the test driver and the test stub is used. <coughs> so basically the book refers to this diagram said of course test bed is a test setup or environment having both the driver on the one side and stub on the other side and the unit is used in the middle. You can see the driver calls unit under test and the unit under test can be replaced with the help of stub 
it's like a wrapper we can have for this. So what does this wrapper do? Basically, uh, whatever the information that we need to get it from this unit will be driven from this driver and uh, wherever the possible expected output that is expected from this unit will be done with the help of the stub. So, stub is going to be replace the actual unit which is unit under test. So, that is the basic of a test stub and drivers. So, interfaces between two systems, uh, two system parts can uh, how why it is used basically test stub and test drivers are basically for the interfaces. So, two system inter two system parts in order to test the interface. So, on the one side we use the driver because the other side they are going to have an interface and uh, when they are closely in conjunction we may not be able to test it. So, for example, so we have a UUT1 and uh, suppose we have a UUT2 and we want to test UUT1 with parameters such as parameter 1, parameter 2 and expected output as expected output 1, expected output suppose. And <coughs> how does this UUT1 is going to get the data is with the help of UUT2. So, what will happen is there is a interaction between these and uh, what we are going to do is we are going to replace this piece with the help of test driver and similarly vice versa while testing this piece of uh, interface with the parameters we are going to use a test driver here maybe one we can call here in this case it is 4. So, likewise the interfaces between two system parts can be tested with the help of this mechanism if both systems are available here available means available for the uh, tester to test it independently so that is what it means or if it is not available then we are going to club both of them and drive it at a higher level. So, this can have uh, <coughs> consequences uh, for the testing time because the time is more uh, required for us actually. So, why this and uh, to start testing a system part as early as possible stubs and drivers are used that means still uh, suppose uh, some functionality in the MBA system is completely developed and other functionality is not being developed how we are going to test that implemented uh, or ready functionalities with the help of drivers where uh, specification uh, details are known and uh, with the help of inputs and the parameters the test drivers are developed and tested basically it is useful for testing the interfaces. <coughs> so, a stub is called by the system on the test and provides the information the missing system part should have been given and a driver calls the system part. Standardization and a use of a test bed architecture uh, basically if you have this uh, test bed architecture defined in the early stage of the project it will be very good for each piece of the uh, software unit under test. So, it will uh, greatly improve the effective use of stubs and drivers. The test bed provides a standard interface for both the tester uh, to construct the construct and execute test cases and for the stubs. So, each separate unit to be tested must have a stub. So, we need to have a stub as well as a driver to test both of them interchangeably.
and uh, techniques for test automation such as uh, data driven testing uh, can be applied effectively here where data is very important and all the uh, type of data what we have studied in our session like P case, C case, C use and all that can be tested with the help of this where combinations of uh, inputs that needs to be driven can be done with this actually. So, such a test bed architecture facilitates the testing of any unit, the reuse of such tests during integration testing and large scale automation of low level testing is easier basically. So, so considering all these aspects, so we need to have test hubs and drivers. Okay, so that is about test hubs and drivers and gray box testing uh, with the white box uh, testing mechanism. Now we will come to the various uh, coverage testing tools that are used in the industry in general. So, logic analyzer, software performance analyzer, timing analyzer, vector cast, LDRA, RTRT, there are a lot of tools like this, so which will help, which will basically used for having the coverage and the instrumentation, the unit testing, etc., will be done with the help of this. It could be one tool or multiple tools depending on the complexity of the embedded software that is being used. Okay, let us try to study or understand the basic thing about these tools. Okay, vector cast this is a tool from vector cast corporation in aerospace. Is being used more where they define different levels and uh, uh, they do the instrumentation of the source code and they run that uh, tool and we will get the report such as this what is being shown below. So, for a database uh, sort of an application in aerospace, this is being used. We can see the metrics, what are the metrics it generates. So, with the help of this matrix. The conclusion will be done so as to see that whether the vector cast tested the output is 100 percent coverage done or not done. We can see uh, there is a database total five number of database have been tested here and the complexity is five state for testing and uh, given so it be level A state is 100 percent that means all the uh, statements or the decision or the conditions that are there for each of these there are about 10. 10 out of 10 have been executed saying that the coverage is 100 percent. Similarly, you see another piece of software that is been tested with the help of vector cast uh, some functionality or a package called manager. And uh, this has a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 types of uh, so functionality like place order, clear table, get check total, etc. Each of them have been tested with the help of vector cast with the instrumentation mechanism, and you can see the complexity. It has a complexity of five. We'll try to understand what is complexity uh, in the uh, next uh, unit, I guess, unit three. And uh, <coughs> complexity of other pieces is one, one. Here it is three. Last one is two. So there are total twelve. Complexity measures that have been tested here with the help of vector cast, and the coverage is something like 63 percent in the first, uh, where the place order is being executed, and the coverage is 14 out of 22. That means to say that the complexity, uh, sorry, the uh, the coverage needs to be done for 22 executable statements or decisions or whatever it is, but out of which only 14 of it have been covered saying that 63 percent have been covered. Similarly, for the next you can see 100 percent coverage and uh, this one is 77 percent, uh, 7 out of 9 and the last one is 0 percent saying that none of the statements have been executed or have been invoked with the help of this tool whatever the instrumentation we have done. So, all together they generate the matrix. Of course, we study about our test matrix and all that in separate session in detail, but to have a glance of uh, what tools commercially they are using it I am just trying to present it uh, the various tools.
the overall coverage is 71 popcorn and the right hand side the unnur column that is for a different uh, piece of uh, uh, functionality or uh, things that will be showcased. <coughs> The next one is LDRA. It is from LDRA, and it is also one of the popular tool that is being used in the aerospace industry. Here also similar to what instrumentation we have seen. So the report can be generated, which will help in terms of doing the in testing. You can see how many test cases have been used, what of them are passed. So what is the report? And likewise, we have a complete coverage of the. Unit under test. Okay. So the next one is being uh, RTRT. This is also one of the good competitor and a popular tool that is being used in different industries, uh, including application, finance. Uh, embedded automotive, telecom, aerospace, etc. Widely it is used, but they have a different variants of this uh, tool, uh, such as RTRT bed, RTRT embed, likewise. <coughs> so it is from IBM. You can see the details uh, in that website or their website. There's a data sheet and all that, which talks about this. So the rational test real time is called as RTRT. So what it does is the source code such as C, C++, Ada, whatever it is fed into that RTRT tool. So what it does is uh, the below steps are there part of the RTRT in terms of configuring and uh, using it. So the environment will be defined first, the test, <coughs> test harness will be created and with the help of our test harness steps will be generated. Then we will have executables for the corresponding test harness. Then actually we execute the test. After execution of the test on the target environment, we have the results, and the results will be used to report it. What is the coverage and all? You can see on the right hand side. This is a code coverage, performance, memory, trace analysis, all these aspects of the testing, white box testing will be done. <coughs> and similarly, test results will be reported to support this coverage or justify the coverage to analyze it. And it uses the cross compiler such as GNU, GCC, etc. to compile the developed test harness and the builds. And it uses the target such as microcontrollers, it could be having the RTOS or it could be with the host machine, simulators or emulators on the target machine. So that is how the RTRT is been structured to use on the white box uh, testing methods. Okay, so that is what is about uh, the commercial tools used for white box. So let us try to study what is the logic analyzer. Uh, basically, logic analyzer can record memory access activity in real time. It is a potential tool for measuring test coverage. So what it does is uh, we have uh, various uh, test hooks within the embedded system, and uh, the test hooks will record different data in a dedicated uh, piece of memory, and that memory can be recorded with the help of uh, this analyzer. That analyzer is called logic analyzer. And there are logic analyzer probes that will be hooked into the memory, and with the help of probes, it will acquire the data in real time, and will have the coverage, and will provide the coverage results and reports. A logic analyzer is designed to be used in trigger and capture mode. That means the logic analyzer can be used as triggering and capturing mode for the memory or the interfaces that is being hooked for that. Piece of uh, it's basically hardware and software both that logic analyzer has. Uh, I may not have a diagram here. Maybe in the future class I'll try to show how it looks. The logic analyzer is. 
the logic analyzer is designed to be used in the trigger and capture mode. It's difficult to convert its trace data into coverage data. So what it means is the trace data, whatever uh, we got it, we may not be able to cover it. We may not come convert that into coverage with the help of uh, this. But what it does is the overall uh, measurement it does. Uh, we do a sampling uh, method that's called statistical sampling. So with the help of this logic analyzer can be used to have a coverage on the trace data on the triggered uh, mechanism. Okay. In continuation of the logic analyzer, in particular it is difficult for sampling methods to give a good picture of ISR test, especially uh, the piece of software having ISR, ISR is nothing but interrupt service routine, you must be aware of this. So basically uh, this is the part and parcel of the MRF software where an interrupt occurs for the normal flow that interrupt has to be handled with a piece of uh, control flow or uh, functional flow or whatever the uh, action that is needed that action and all will be part of the routine called interrupt service routine. A good ISR is fast meaning to say that ISR has to be short and sweet, it needs to get fast and come out of that routine, that means it needs to do certain flag settings or certain minimum options so that it can come out very fast, ISR cannot be uh, bigger, it cannot be complex and it cannot take effort to take more time. If an ISR is infrequent, that means the frequency of the ISR happening in the embedded life cycle is uh, less the probability of capturing it during any particular trace event is correspondingly low, that means capturing the trace data is lower because ISR is happening very less frequency. That is easy to set the logic analyzer to trigger on ISR axis, so but easy to set the logic analyzer because the capturing uh, mechanism will be easier. Thus coverage of ISR and other low frequency core can be measured by making a separate run to the test suit with the logic analyzer set to trigger and trace just that core. So what can happen is uh, we are trying to focus only the piece of uh, software which are part of the ISR, so what we can do since uh, ISRs are very fast and uh, very frequently happening within the system and uh, the system having complexity in terms of more number of ISRs, uh, what best uh, can be done with the logic analyzer is that we can comment out the rest of the code and focus only on the ISR what is and trigger that and capture the data what ISR is supposed to do and analyze the captured data with the help of logic analyzer and do the coverage whether ISR is capable of doing or covering all the intended result. So there is another set of uh, tool, it is called software performance analyzer, so performance could be in terms of uh, memory, performance could be in terms of memory that means memory has to be accurate or intended for certain portion of it, suppose say a requirement could say uh, 50 percent of buffer memory to be reserved for future upgrade or scalability etc. So what will happen is meaning to say that for example if you have a 1 MB of memory you should have 512 KB of memory as reserved against 1 MB. So that is the requirement <coughs> and how do we test how much the software is taking, so there are a lot of methods and there are a lot of tools also, so those are all coming under performance analyzer. <coughs> By using the information from the link of your map, these tools can display coverage information on a function 
or modular basis model basis rather than raw memory addresses so this is a map file for each of the embedded project this will be done with the help of build like this compile plus link with the help of this the map file will be generated this map file will have all the information such as the addresses the opcodes and uh, the BSS stack and all the string information with the help of that memory map we know that how much it is going to take this build for that particular embedded project with the help of that we should be able to arrive at the performance of that particular unit. So, for that there are uh, tools analyzers from different vendors but mostly it will be done manually or statistically statically basically. Okay, so performance testing, performance testing and consequently performance tuning are not only important as part of your functional testing, but also as part of important tools for the maintenance and upgrade phase of the embedded life cycle. So, another important aspect of performance is memory we know speed, speed with load they say. So, it is very important to have the performance of the embedded system stable and continuous without the change and with efficient with efficiency having the scalability and modularity. This is one of the performance requirements they use it not only it is enough to have a memory satisfied speed, speed means not fast basically with various conditions on the field you should be able to con perform consistently and uh, scalably etc. The other thing is timing it should be accurate and stable. So, this is also one of the performance measure they have it. So, Performance testing and consequently performance tuning are not only important as part of your functional testing, but also as important tools for the maintenance and upgrade. Upgradeability is more because the embedded system is ever living and growing because of the fixes in the requirement and more requirements getting added in the embedded life cycle. <coughs> performance testing is crucial for embedded system design and unfortunately is usually the one type of software characteristic characterization test that is most often ignored that means I have seen many of the MA system world industries they give less priority to performance testing and tuning especially in the beginning or the middle of the project, but they struggle in the end because they would not have met the criteria of performance and lot of bugs and errors will occur due to the performance issues. That is why it is very important to have an understanding of what is the performance of the embedded system accordingly we need to have a testing mechanism especially on the memory speed timing and the load of the unit and we should use the analyzers such as performance analyzers and map files and all that. Probably we will try to touch base a simple map file to have an understanding of what it does. But Basically, it is part of the embed system course. I will try to just address it in the future class. Okay. The next one is, as I said, memory usage. What size, what sort of a memory usage is there in the embed system? So, basically, we use a memory map with the help of memory map. So, we will be able to analyze the stack, the inbuilt memory, it could be the RAM, ROM, ROM is could be a flash or we can have a small footprint uh, in terms of faults and all that usually that will be stored in NVM it is also called as E square ROM electrically erasable or programmable read only memory. So, there are various types of tests for example, for E square ROM they use the pattern test and for flash they use the integrity test, integrity test can be done with the help of working ones where each memory cell 
is tested with zeros and ones. That means whether each cell is capable of flashing or programming a zero, a programming one. So that is also called as a pattern test. Usually they use if it is 16 bit. Phi a, phi a, phi a, phi a. You can see why phi a it is because phi a is nothing but I will write it on in binary. What is phi? 0, 1, 0, 1. Whereas a is 1, 0, 1, 0. This is 10. So we know that the cells, the first cell is. Addressed here this with zero, and the same is cell is addressed with one. Similarly, the next cell is addressed with uh, one, and then next the same cell is filled with zero. So likewise, we are going to have a pattern test or working on test where each cell in the memory will be tested. So on the memory, uh, like flash or RAM, the same testing will be done. So mostly. These tests are basically built along with the code because there are requirements which talks about these tests have to be there frequently should be done in the embed systems. So they will have a implementation uh, in the embed system itself at certain uh, frequency when the system is running. Uh, but we need to log whether that there are any failures for such tests. These tests are called built-in tests. Built-in tests. There are different types of built-in tests. That is uh, not the uh, scope of this. It depending on the embed systems that we use, and uh, all this will be logged <coughs> with the help of those tests. So that is part of the memory usage and memory testing. Basically. In the embed software testing. Okay, the next one is the timing analysis. So there are stringent timing requirements to test and analyze the timing, how much the embed system is taking. Timing analysis have to be conducted. Okay. And uh, mostly the timing analysis are done with the help of you know, the time machines. And trace machines, which are available in the uh, debugger itself. The IDE is nothing but integrated development environment, such as multi lotter by code warrior, etc. All these uh, debuggers have uh, inbuilt time machines or trace machines, and that will be used that is helpful in finding the timing requirements in terms of unlocking code and putting the breakpoint and uh, measure the time how much it is taking and all this stuff. So we can validate with the help of that. Some of the embed systems will provide ports and that port which are LEDs you can say can be inspected or IO ports. So which will toggle for certain range or certain frequency and that can be put into the scope. Scope means oscilloscope. We have multi channel oscilloscope from uh, <coughs> Agilent, Trident, etc. So, we can use any of that oscilloscopes to measure it. So, such embed systems uh, will have to have ports available, but it may so happen that. Uh, the ports may not be there because uh, it is additional uh, hardware and they may not be able to uh, they cannot or they may not be able to afford to have that because it is going to occupy space and uh, more current etc. For intermediate testing before the last build they may be having it within the part of the board or the target board or the FPGA or this with the help of that the timing can be tested where the embedded software will be triggering upon certain events and that events can be captured in the oscilloscope. And uh, for ISRs we can analyze through IDE where uh, ISRs so we can have a counter and how much the counter is getting 
the counter also can have uh, registers the timing registers can be used along with the counters to arrive at how much time it has taken. So manually this will be done to analyze the ISR timings etc. Then we have inbuilt registers on the target systems and microcontrollers such as watch log and all stuff with the help of those we can uh, state watch log registers, timing registers. RTCs, RTCs in the mode, real time clock. All this can be used for doing the timing analysis. So, with the help of this, we can do the timing analysis. Okay, so having understood the various tools and all that, the applicability we need to understand for the life cycle. Coming to the the testing tools, so there is a life cycle that is being categorized. So we'll uh, try to understand uh, in brief what is this uh, uh, tools life cycle. Basically, it is called uh, the various tools, how they are getting used, how they are getting categorized. So what is the use and all that? Quickly, we'll try to understand based on whatever the type of tools that we need to have in the embedded software testing. Okay. So you can see a diagram here that depicts about uh, the various tools related to the testing life cycle. So we know that there are uh, as per the uh, TM method or the Lito principles so what we have studied there is the life cycle of PSCC the preparation, execution and all the stuff, completion and all the stuff. So we have various tools for T preparation, we have a case tool analyzer, complexity analyzer, for specification we have test case generation or test case generator that will help in developing the test cases and for execution we have test data generator, record and playback tool, load and stress tool, simulator, debugger etc. There are a number of tools. Doesn't mean that all need to be used, but it's a categorization basically that need to be applied and planned. This will all be part of the planning, software verification planning, which we have studied in our earlier sessions. Similarly, for completion, we have a reporting mechanism and all that. And overall, for PNC planning and control, we have different tools in terms of defect management, test management, configuration management, scheduling, and progress monitoring tool. Okay, so this is how the life cycle data or the life cycle aspects of the testing will be considered in terms of categorizing the testing tools. And uh, we will try to study some of them in detail as we go through uh, some of the sessions like uh, defect management or test management, configuration management in the future classes. Okay, so that is about the life cycle. We will try to quickly understand uh, uh, each tool such as uh, Planning and control is a defect management tool. A defect management system is used to for defects, trace them, and generate the progress and status reports. Defects detected during the test process must be collected in an orderly way, it should be organized properly. For a small project, a simple file system with a few control procedures is sufficient. Whereas the more complex projects need to have at least a database sort of a thing with the possibility of generating progress reports, the tool should help basically. This will help the testing team to analyze where they are. So, defect management tools such as Bugzilla can be used for management of the defects. So, that is part of the planning and control. The next one is a test management tool. So the tools so with the ability to link system requirements to test cases. Basically, how the tests are managed, how they how they can be traced, all this will be part of this. So the tools should have the ability to link the requirements into the test cases. 
they become very useful if system requirements are changed or might change. Why this we need all these tools is it's very important to have control of the changes. So how do we do? So with the help of these tools, so it's very easy to change it to plug the new requirements or deletion of the requirements, etc. So all this can be done with the help of test management tool. Then we have a scheduling and progress monitoring tool. There are a number of tools available for scheduling and progress monitoring, such as the MPP and all. We have seen there are different tools also which can be integrated along with the test management tools, such as TestLink or Bugzilla for defect management. Etc. So it's very easy with the help of that these tools for scheduling and progress monitoring. Very useful for a test manager combined with information from the defect and test management systems. And preparation phase and specification phase tools on the left hand side you can see is the preparation phase and specification phase. There are case tool analyzer, complexity analyzer, cascade generator. We will try to <coughs> understand what are those probably we will try to detail it out in the future sessions ok. Um, case tool generator uh, preparation phase they use it uh, especially uh, for those where we use object oriented sort of under system for model based systems the tools such as UML based tools are used for consistency checks and all that. <coughs> so, they will be able to help in terms of uh, uh, the preparation phase, so they can be used to check whether or not the design has omitted any things or any consistency between different design elements. Etc. So this is basically testability review of the test basis. What we is getting planned in terms of preparation. So the next one is a complexity analyzer. We try to study the complexity, software complexity in the future class. Basically, this complexity analyzer which I understand for physical process from Sky Tools. Uh, is capable of giving the indication about the complexity of the software. The degree of complexity is an indicator of the chance of errors occurring and also the number of test cases, how much we need and all to test the, uh, the system thoroughly. So, for this, uh, they use a standard called uh, Mercabe complexity. This is one of the important or Good complexity measure generally they follow in the industry which identifies the complexity. This is basically getting identified. I can explain that in one of the next class with the formula and all that. We need to know about adjacent nodes basically. We know that embedded software can have multiple edges and nodes based on the vision and the flow of the software. With the help of that, the complexity is arrived. Okay. The next one is the test case generator. This is for the specification, test specification or test cases. So there are test case generators such as uh, MATLAB, LabViews, and all that. But uh, oh sorry, LabViews and all are used as a script and all this stuff. So using something like uh, Excel sheet based. Uh, Tools or DC or Python even or Perl. These can be used from uh, inputs such as requirements to test cases. So with the help of this tool, the test cases can be generated automatically and consistently. It will be used for different requirements, changing requirements, and all that. So that is how test case generators are used in the preparation and specification phase of the embedded system testing. So, next one we have the 
execution. The execution can be done with a number of tools and the various types of things that we have. Definitely, minimum three to four tools should be used for any of the embed systems having a moderate complexity. And uh, here is a list of the type of tools that are used in the execution phase test data generators, record and playback tool, load and stress test, simulators. We know we have studied about from simulators, stubs and drivers. We studied this today. The debuggers, we know that IDE is used as debugger for code analysis and all that. We have a static source code analyzer such as understand for CC filters, DC lint, likewise, and coverty is also another code analyzer. Error detection tool <coughs> in the code, performance analyzers, memory analyzers, and we have code coverage analyzers such as uh, the instrumentation analyzers, uh, vectorcast, RTLT and uh, LDRA likewise. So we have a thread and event analyzer where we use in autos which is living with the multiple threads and all that. Then other one is called threat detection tool, it's a specific tool where uh, if there is a threat to the email software system due to error so code or a dangerous way of uh, having the crash etc that can be identified with the help of uh, this mechanism uh, with this tool. So that is the execution phase the tools are categorized. <coughs> so having understood these testing tools and all that uh, we will try to understand the testing terminology and all that stuff in the next class is a configuration management tool also used. We will try to go through that in the next class.